So hi everyone, my name is Inval Levy. I'm a C++ C++ developer. And as my LinkedIn profile says, uh, I'm very enthusiastic about C++. And my lecture today is about virtual tables. Uh, it's quite of a basic subject, but I think it's very interesting. And I'm gonna start with the goal, why do we need virtual tables? Then I'm gonna do an overview of the structure. Uh, I'm going to look at some alternatives to virtual table that can actually uh, have polymorphism to, to have polymorphism in our code. Then I'm going to show you some benchmarking that I did and we'll conclude. All right, so let's start. So the goal of virtual table is actually to have polymorphism. We want to be able to have polymorphism in our code. And we want to be able to implement derived as a base um, mechanism, right? So in this lecture, I also want to go deeper and see what happens behind the scene in the assembly when we implement virtual tables. So let's start with a warm up. So I hope you can read. I saw that uh, some of the previous lectures were smaller, so I hope this one's okay for you. So here I have my best class and I have the base constructor and the base destructor, and I implement print me function. Everyone can see it properly? If not, you can go uh, closer to the, to the And here I have my derived class. I have constructor and destructor and the print me function. I use a base uh, pointer here, and I allocate my derived. What do you think that will be printed here? Anyone? What? Yeah, so what the structure will that be? Right, so it's very, it's very uh, uh, obvious and quite, uh, everyone that developed in C++ can see it, that we don't use virtual destructor here. And therefore, we will call the base destructor and for obvious reasons, that's something that we usually want to avoid in normal code. <laughs> So there's two ways to solve this. First of all, as you said, is adding the virtual keyword. Now, virtual keyword by itself just tells the compiler that we want to refer to the dynamic type of the object instead of the static type. Okay, so we have a, a dynamic dispatch and static dispatch. And uh, you want me to talk more about this or? Okay, so I'll just uh, say it in two words. Dynamic dispatch means that the compiler looks at the type of the object on runtime, and static dispatch means that it uh, refers to the type of the object on compile time. So here we got the fix, uh, we fix our problem, and we have the uh, derived destructor called. And another way to solve this is by putting the base destructor under the protected, right? And in this case, we won't be able to create the base uh, pointer, but only the derived pointer. We also avoid from our problem. So we defined the goal of using virtual table. Now let's do the overview. So as I said, it implements dynamic dispatch. In this lecture, I'm gonna use an example of a picture. Uh, I'm gonna assume a picture of 1,000 over 1,000 uh, unsigned char. And for the simplicity, I wanna be able to implement filters on the different uh, pixels of the picture, right? It's each filter only activates on one pixel. So I'll show you later examples of calling the pixels, uh, the filters over the pixels uh, through the virtual table and otherwise. So the structure of virtual table. So we also have our base filter here, just like before. And you can see that it implements virtual activate and virtual base uh, destructor. We have our bright filter implements base filter and it have also activate function. And once I create an instance of base filter, then I'll get the virtual table suitable for the base filter. It contains the activate function and the destructor, of course. And in the instance that I created in the memory, I get the pointer to the virtual function, to the virtual table of base filter. Of course, if I create another instance, I still get the same pointer. Uh, 
and <coughs> if I create our filter bright derives from base, of course we have the memory part of the base filter and beneath it we have the memory <coughs> allocated for filter bright, right? They both get the pointers and the compiler knows uh, that if we want to get the dynamic type of the object, we can call it by using the pointers to the virtual table. So this was our first. Okay, so this is the assembly part, the data part of the assembly. It's not the commands, it's the data. And this is the virtual table, how it actually looks like, all right? So you can see to have two calls for the structure, one of them would be implementing the actions and the second one would be actually um, releasing the memory. And we have also two calls for the destructor here and activate function also appears on the virtual table. And this part is referring to RTTI uh, information, okay? So it's not relevant to my lecture, I just wanted to show you that it also appears here. And if you wanna avoid this, we can always use the compiler's no RTTI flag. Um, but keep in mind that if you do that, you won't be able to use dynamic cast or type information in your code. So now we go to the calling of the calling part of the assembly, the part with the commands. And I'm just gonna go over those. This uh, register is the accumulator register. It's the one that we do a calculation at. This one is the stack base pointer register. It points to the beginning of the stack. It's not the stack pointer, so don't get confused there. And this one is CX uh, counter register. And here you can see those three lines. And these three lines are the dereferencing of the pointer from the virtual table. And we put the information inside of RAX register. And we dereference again and again. And if I would call this activate function without going through the virtual table, I would have seen something like this. The call would be directly by the pointer. So it might not look much, but soon I'm gonna show you that there's really is, in some cases, there might be a difference in the runtime performance. So pitfalls in using inheritance in general, uh, the common one is diamond problem. And you can see that if we derive from filter bright and filter dark, both derive from base filter, and we have filter derived derive from both of them, we might get a problem here. The code would look like this. We have our base filter. We have filter bright and filter dark, both derive from base, and implement activate function here. And we have filter derived here. And we give the uh, constructor uh, default values here. This is just for simplicity. I could pass them or some other way of defining them. And here I have my base filter allocation, filter bright, and then the base filter that is part of the filter dark class. And then we have our derived filter. Now you can see here the problem, right? What do you think? What's my problem? Yeah, val, exactly. So if I try to refer to val in my filter derived class, I have two val, and therefore the compiler will obviously scream at me. And the way to solve this is not uh, close, so I'll, so, I'll, so, I'll show you soon the virtual uh, inheritance. But the way to solve this, if you don't want to use virtual inheritance, is just telling the compiler what val do I refer to. And again, that makes sense, right? But a very common way, as been said here, to solve the diamond problem is using virtual inheritance. But virtual inheritance disattach the uh, data, the constructor data from the, allo the allocation of the object. In a way that, first of all, it looks like this. We only have one base filter. Filter bright and filter dark both use this instance in memory. And filter derived comes here. But the problem is that unlike what we would have expected, the value that defined for val is not the one that we pass here because the, cons the compiler have the free, uh, can allocate the memory for base class freely, have its own 
uh, decision making and we can't we can't uh, assume that it gets the information that we give it so it's like I think it's a very serious problem if we try to make a class virtual to uh, inheritance virtually this might be unexpected behavior for us and of course throughout the whole calling convention of the constructors we only get this value so if we want to be able to pass a value to the to the base we have to explicitly write it on the constructor or filter the right so this was just an overview on why virtual inheritance is dangerous why inheritance in general is something that you need to understand if you want to use it and let's go over the alternatives so first of all I'm gonna okay I'm gonna show here this is very simpli simplified code it's not really how I would work code, uh, write code usually but I want to show you that uh, we can always try to mem manage the memory by ourselves we can overwrite operator new operator delete etc we can allocate memory buffers or use some kind of uh, previously uh, allocated memory and in this case uh, in this simplified uh, example I use this kind of a switch case to decide what type of memory how do I want to refer to the memory and by the cases refer to the memory um, and call the print me function so of course we get uh, this uh, behavior of base constructor derived constructor because we allocate the uh, base they're derived here and then we get the call to base and derived as expected but what happens if I add the derived int only to the uh, derived class and of course it's not something that you want to do but it can happen if we try to manage the memory by ourselves. So we have here a heap overflow, right? Because we refer to the, to the uh, class as derived, though it allocate memory as base. And it's not easy to spot. It might be problematic to spot. So here we have stack overflow. So, it, again, this is a very simplified uh, version of managing the memory by itself, but I'm just trying to point out that this might be, uh, not be a good reason to do this. So, what we did here is we broke the first two rules of in the static class documentation. First of all, we uh, didn't took under consideration that the static class doesn't, uh, it can call our constructor for the new derived type. So we don't really know uh, what would be the object that we're referring to. And the second one is that static class performs a down class, but it doesn't check the down class. Now, of course, I could use the dynamic uh, cast in the slide before, but I'm, uh, referring, I'm trying to point to a, a very uh, high runtime performance code. So dynamic cast will always be somehow slower. All right, so the next way to avoid virtual table if you want to is using subtyping just like in the first slide that we saw. Now, as I, as I said before, we hide the base and we avoid going through the virtual table and everything works fine, but the problem is that it's very not flexible, right? We don't want to decide, we not, not, don't necessarily want to decide everything on compile time. So the alternative to both of the above is the CRTP. CRTP is a way of doing a polymorphism in compile time. It's a design pattern. And I'm going to go over this slide because first time seeing it might be a bit uh, overwhelming. We have our template-based filter class. <clears throat> and it implements the activate function. Now, it implements it by calling the static cast and uh, creating 
uh, by, on this and creating the T type. And again, as we said, it might call the constructor. And then it calls the derived activate function. Derived activate, uh, here we have the, both of the derives. They can both implement derived activate as they wish. And they both inheritance from base filter using template filter writes. Um, sorry, using template of base filter. And now we got something that looks very much like using dynamic uh, type, only on compile time. I'm going to show you in the next slide the difference. Now, it's hard to see by using the other example, but now here I compare the static polymorphism and the CRTP, and you can see that uh, I have a base static, it have a print function, and the print function uses functions from the base static class. Now, I have a derived static class, and it calls print caller, uses print function from the base that calls those functions. I also implement it using CRTP, and here you can see that the get A and get B functions are actually called by the, uh, the this pointer being uh, casted to uh, and there it is. yes. So, so here you can see the results for get A and get B using the static polymorphism. And when we call the print caller using CRTP, we actually get the results going through the uh, base class, and the base class calls the derived class, right? So, so I compare between subtyping and CRTP, and subtyping is easy to read. It's very uh, intuitive for most people, and CRTP might not be easy for reading for the first time you see it. Uh, inheritance is, can, uh, of more than one uh, descendant is problematic in subtyping. In CRTP, uh, sorry, it's, simple, it's very simple in subtyping. In CRTP, it's more problematic. And I'll show you next the example of inheritance of multiple uh, descendants. And as we saw, the derived class can only implement function from the base class. When it called, can only implement function that's called function from base class. We can't call functions from derived class within functions from base class inherited by the derived. And both of them only relevant on compile time. So let's go over this example. This is example of inheriting multiple objects. This is our base filter, just like before. It's a template class. And this is the middle filter class that derives from base filter. And we have the filter derived. It's the last in the chain. And this one implements a middle filter template, takes, by, uh, takes template argument, argument, filter derived. Now, we can create our filter derived here. And we get the derived activate function. And we can also create our middle class uh, type here by giving the template, this one's uh, void. As you can see, the default is void. And we can just leave this blank and get the middle type uh, allocated. And this all happens in compile time. Keep in mind that this doesn't go through the virtual table. All right. So uh, I'm going to show you some benchmarking that I did. And I want to I wanna point out that in this benchmarking, uh, it's very important to know I'm an embedded developer, and we try to uh, consider our pl uh, platform always. So pay attention to the platform that you're using. Um, different compilers obviously implement uh, being implemented differently for different platforms sometimes. So sometimes there's some optimization that they can do on certain platforms. Also, we want to refer to optimization level because uh, as you're going to see next, optimization level matters a lot in this uh, performance, in performance issues. 
we have our compiler, compiler explicit instructions. As you saw before, there's inlining. And inlining is avoiding, avoids calling the function. So avoid call function might be uh, uh, worth more than avoid pointer uh, dereferencing. Re and of course, the compiler. So the code for the benchmarking was, uh, was written like this. We have our base filter virtual, we have our activate function, and we have our virtual virtual derives from base filter virtual. And this all goes through the virtual table. Here we have the alternative of template CRTP uh, class, and we have our activate function calls the static class and uh, calls through this pointer to implement activate. And here we have the implement activate of the derived class. So keep in mind also that once the compiler knows all the information on compile time, it can create the code with, uh, add some locality to the code. It can put the uh, calls for the functions closer to each other and this might also be important in the benchmarking. So let's just go over to the optimization level. We have O1 that reduce code size, but it tries not to uh, emphasize, try not to uh, add compilation time. We have O2 that does the same thing, but also uh, might increase compile time. And it does some things like loop and rolling, etc. Um, O3 is, of course, all the optimizations are on, and OS reduces size. And the benchmarking I did was calling uh, each pixel of the picture with the, filter, uh, with the filter. And I kept going through the pointer to the virtual table uh, on purpose. So obviously this example is not very, uh, it's not something that might be in every code, but some cases you might see the differences. So with no optimization, I got that the CRTP is slower. Uh, you can think why. I pointed it out before. CRTP, remember that CRTP creates function. So basically, CRTP uh, creates what? Yes, exactly. Function calls cost more than the referencing pointers. But once I use uh, optimizations, I already get, uh, this by the way is the CPU ticks in thousands, and this ran on a picture of one, uh, 10,000 over 10,000 pixels in a loop, as I said, and this is the O2 optimization level, so here we get loop and wrong, this might slower our code, and in O3, we actually get the biggest uh, performance uh, optimization, on CRTP by 20, uh, by, by 84 percent. So, yeah. What happened to the V table on O3? What? What happens on the V table on O3? Because it gets worse. Yeah. Ah, I, I don't really, I wouldn't really refer to those. This is CPU ticks and it can be different by different runs. Okay. So I don't really, I don't think that this like, uh, I don't refer to this difference as something very meaningful because in thousand ticks, but it's the same. Uh, all right, and let's conclude. So I think that we have to take into consideration the structure of our program. When do we do static dispatch and when do we do dynamic dispatch? This might not be relevant to all, uh, to, to all uh, programs that we develop, but it might be important in some cases. And keep in mind that CRTP have overhead of design, because if you haven't used it before, this might not be trivial for most people. And of course, it improves runtime. So management means what I uh, referred to before, the erase, uh, type erasure, also called. And it's locally readable. Virtual table, uh, by locally readable, I mean that if you're already using it in your code, this will be easy to read. 
Uh, virtual tape is obviously very readable and very common, and CRTP would be somehow readable. Um, me uh, managing our memory by ourselves have some flexibility. Virtual tape is obviously very flexible, and CRTP is not flex flexible on runtime. You need to keep this in mind. Yes. How do you say? How do you say the collection of the types with CRTP? Collection of types. Yeah. What? Well, be more usually, specific. Because usually, when you are using a base type, you would like you know some kind of polymorphism of handling a lot of base, yeah, true. base types. So CRTP doesn't doesn't help you in that case. First of all, CRTP is Since you are using used, those are different types. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure that's true because CRTP is used in uh, ATL and STL, so apparently you can use that in algorithms as well. But of course you'll have to have special implementation. <coughs> you can take the pointers and You're right that you can't do, th this is not completely, it's not, um, you can't erase the type when you use CRTP. But you can use other ways like using pointers. All right. So if you care about performance, I think you should take into consideration using this design pattern. I think it's very interesting. Um, the results surprised me, at least. And also, I think it's interesting to know how things go behind the scene, as I said, going through the virtual table and so on. And that's it. Um, thank you.